It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. All right, my friends, I got good news for you. Health is just, uh, health care is just getting better and better. I have a great show for you today. You know, I want to thank all of you who come up to me uh, when you see me or my wife and, and you thank us for the health shows uh, and certainly thank Lehigh Valley um, uh, Health Network uh, for um, providing this information. But there's a lot of you who are learning a lot uh, from our health shows. And one of the things that I highly recommend uh, for those of you who have downloaded our app, uh, search SSP TV, and you get all of the shows, all of the health shows we do, uh, and it's, it's very informative. But to my guest today, I'm having fun with this guy because I know him many, many years when he's a kid, Daniel, Dr. Daniel Benio. And of course, he's uh, the son of uh, my good friend, Dr. Philip Benio, and uh, his brother is Philip. Hey, Dan, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. Last time we talked, you were playing guitar. You were in, in Southern California, living it up. Daniel. That's right, looking out at the Pacific Coast, <laughs> hanging out, uh, yeah. getting a sun. Where did you stay in Southern California? Uh, more of a Los Angeles County, so Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach, yeah. Manhattan Beach. Yeah. How long were you out there? About three years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you were involved in music, right? Correct. Yeah, I uh, play guitar. I like to bang on drums, so I think I play drums. <laughs> and then um, we did mostly recording. Uh, so I was on the other side of the glass recording for live bands, studio bands, some radio. So. Okay, now here's the transition here. Okay, you're an in internal medicine. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and folks, he looks like he's 18, but he's in his 30s. Okay. Um, <laughs> So what happened? I mean, so you, what what made you get involved in, in medicine? Where, where did the transition occur? Or, or, or they say, when did the change occur? Sure. As I like to say, there was no like aha moment. And so um, healthcare has been a part of my life, uh, just growing up with my dad, rounding with him uh, in the hospital, seeing patients with him in his clinic down in drums. So it's always been there. And so when I moved out to California, I was kind of pursuing another career, but after a while, I kind of felt, I feel like there's something more. I should be doing more for people in general. And it's funny how music and medicine kind of have similarities where you work with someone to achieve a goal and you try to develop your plan accordingly to what they want. And so um, at, at some point I felt uh, I just need more. So I kind of, on my way driving across the country, decided to go into medicine then. When was this, though? How many years ago was this? This must have been in, um, well, let me do some math, about 2005, okay. 2006. And so, therefore, that's when you decided you wanted to go into medicine. Okay. Correct. Okay, and yeah. where did you go then? So then after uh, I drove back home, knocked on my dad's door uh, and said, I want, I'm back, I want to do medicine. I then went to King's College uh, in college. Wilkes-Barre. <laughs> yep, very good college. So I went there for undergrad. Uh, and that's actually where I met my wife, Nicole. And um, we ended up, uh, I just applied for medical school and um, then ended up going to the Commonwealth Medical College uh, in Scranton and um, ended up matching for residency at uh, Hershey Medical Center for mm -hmm. internal medicine. Mm -hmm. And so the difference here, um, your dad's internal medicine. Correct. Right? Okay. Uh, the difference uh, in uh, internal medicine, you know, what is the difference between the different practices? Sure, sure. So family medicine versus internal medicine. Really, there's a lot of overlap between the two. And um, family medicine traditionally uh, can do babies, uh, obstetrics, gynecology, and then can also do adolescent, adult, and geriatric medicine. Um, Traditionally, for internal medicine, uh, we don't typically do uh, obstetrics or typically uh, too uh, young adolescent or pediatric medicine. Uh, our training allows us to, if we did want to specialize, we could go into cardiology, endocrinology, gastroenterology. So our training provides a fundamental basis to build upon. So well. now, you know, coming from a medical family, you know, Phil, I know you're doctor for many, many years, okay, he's like a brother to me. Uh, in fact, your whole family's like family to me. The, um, w what do you bring to the table? Here, you know, here's, you know, you're just coming out of uh, medical school, your dad's been around. Sure. I mean, he could, he could look at something and say, all right, this is what it is, okay, because of his experience. So, mm. so when you're having your family discussions, you're sitting down at the table, okay, and dad's yeah. saying, now you listen to me, Daniel, this is the way it's gonna be. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you bring to the table? Um, having just come out of residency and 
finishing and completing my board certification in internal medicine, um, I provide uh, a little bit more updated medicine, uh, more update to the guidelines that are recommended through various organizations. So uh, that's taught a lot about evidence-based medicine. We hear that term a lot. And um, that was taught through uh, medical school and residency. And so I'm kind of up to date on that. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because today, uh, you know, I, uh, the oncology department that Lehigh Valley has mm -hmm. is like with, with uh, Mike Evans and, and sure. the doctors up there, they're fantastic. Um, the medicine they have today, okay, versus maybe 10 years ago, mm. big difference as to saving many lives who people who have cancer. I, and I guess when you're saying evidence-based medicine, you're, you're bringing this to the table. Not that your father or Phil Jr. is not aware of it, but you're, you're bringing different things to the table. Am I correct to assume that? Correct, correct. And I think also what um, there is a lot of evidence-based medicine, but you can sometimes it's tailored towards the patient. And I think that's where parsing what my training is taught, as well as the experience that my brother and my dad have, allow you to provide a more personalized care. Mm -hmm. And so um, certainly that medicine is a practice and it's a lifelong practice. You mm -hmm. don't come out of training and say, well, I know everything. Yeah. Um, and even my dad at 30 plus years practice is still learning. Yeah. It, it, and, it's, uh, and he's on, they're on top of things, okay? Healthcare, as I said before, has just changed so, you know, I think for the better, in some areas, you mm -hmm. don't get to see doctors, but you see PAs, and your brother's a great PA, sure. okay? Um, so they're very knowledgeable, and I, I guess sometimes mm. the, the older people, not me, but older people, <laughs> say, I want to see the doctor. I don't want to see this. I want to see the doctor, but however, we have trained people. So what do you see the future looking like then in, sure. in, in medicine, you know, with PAs and mm. uh, practice, nurse practitioners, et cetera, mm -hmm. their participation in the healthcare field? Sure. I see um, the trend is a general broadening of scope of practice. And so what does that mean is being able to see patients more independently. Um, some patients who aren't as medically complex, maybe. Um, and so it, it's, a, it's a, not necessarily a trial and error, but it's a process that takes time. Um, certain states have certainly allowed for a greater scope of practice. Uh, Pennsylvania, maybe not so much, but I think... What do you mean by that? Meaning there, uh, some providers are allowed to uh, open up their own practice and not have oversight from, say, a physician as the traditional model has uh, become. So. Pennsylvania, I believe, is uh, still one of those states that is not allowing for quite so much independent practice. There's still some oversight. Um, and so there's differing opinions on um, whether there's not enough oversight, there's too much. Um, and it, it's really, it's all about safe medicine. And it's all about doing what's right for the patient. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing something to a patient that causes harm, that patient isn't going to see you again. And so that's kind of a self-regulation of that market. Mm -hmm. But we also want to have a market that doesn't put patients at risk um, for having an adverse outcome. Mm -hmm. Coming to this area, okay, um, uh, born and raised in here, and you know, mm -hmm. we could have done, we could have been in California work when, when I was working with Jack Palance, my family. Mm -hmm. We went out there, we got a taste of it. You know, we worked mm -hmm. for a number of weeks, etc. But you, we just realized that you know, my kids learned that. This is a great area to oh, sure. born and raised. So what decide, What made your decision other than dad and brother and your family? Okay, or maybe that was your decision, mm. I know, the coming, uh, staying here in the area. Sure. Um, uh, having grown up in the area, you're used to it. There's a comfort level. Um, that's kind of what causes that boomerang effect is people like to, they gravitate towards what's natural and what they're comfortable with. Um, but I also see, I, I just love the, the people in the area. Uh, the great food and culture, great Italian food, as you know. Um, what do you think I'm putting weight on? <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk about that. Oh, um, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad tells me enough of that stuff. But it, it's just a great area, and, um, and having grown up into it, it, it's such an honor and a pleasure to treat people who I saw when I was a kid rotating with my dad in the office and some of my friends who I grew up with as well. Well, now, you're in the um, uh, Lehigh Valley Physicians Group, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> now, 
Um, folks, I'm talking to Dr. F um, Daniel Benio, uh, and uh, he's not new by no means, but um, on board in the Eternal Medicine uh, Lehigh Valley Physicians Group, 501-4-LVH. Uh, if you would like to make an appointment or, or talk with them, we'll come back after break. We'll talk a little bit more about Daniel and some of the new exciting things that are happening in medicine. Stay with us. Welcome back to the San Lasan Show, folks. Remember, 24-7 SSPTV.com. All of our shows in the Pottsville area, Channel 190, Comcast 190, Wilkesbury uh, and the Mountaintop and Pitts, uh, Kingston area, Channel 92, folks. Saturday and Sunday evenings and in the Lackawanna County, Scranton and those areas. Uh, Saturday and Sunday mornings from 7 to 11 uh, on Channel 190. My, my guest today is Dr. Daniel Benio, uh, internal medicine, uh, and he's with the uh, Lehigh Valley Physicians Group. If you would like to get in contact with him, very simple number, 570-5014-LVH. Daniel. Um, Talking about you know bringing um, new concepts to this uh, to the table, um, how do you um, well, first of all in this area? Okay, what are some of the predominant things that um, in healthcare is it is it flu is it you know is it diabetes is it heart conditioning is it obesity I I I, I mean. I know there's a, a spectrum here, there's a sure. buffet, but what are some of the areas that are, you know, sure. pre predominant in this area? The answer is D, all of the above. So um, the area... Why do you sound like your dad now? <laughs> <laughs> so um, what we're starting to see is a lot of geriatric conditions, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, and we're seeing them at younger ages. We're starting to see them in people who are 30s, 40s, 50s, which um, hasn't been seen in over the last 30 years. So um, we're starting to see younger people with now these chronic medical conditions, which um, big things are high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, obesity is, is, a, is a major one as well, smoking, um, and certain times of year, uh, flu, of course, mm -hmm. certainly runs rampant. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> I was driving this morning, and the uh, engine um, on my car, the engine thing says, "Service your car." Okay, and boy, I'm on the phone, get, making sure I'm getting that car in there, getting serviced. Unfortunately, as your dad says a number of times, we don't service ourselves. You mm -hmm. know, we don't get to the uh, because. You know, first no of all, light. first mm -hmm. of all, you're looking at the biggest baby. I'm in your dad's office. My <laughs> blood pressure is to the roof. I'm dying. I have everything. Okay, mm. so he has to calm me down before even. So, so I got to tell you, I'm one of those people. However, the, you know, you could, there's a lot of things that you could prevent. I would mm. think, Daniel. By, mm -hmm. So what do you recommend people doing? Okay, uh, if they haven't been to a doctor. Sure. Uh, first is to schedule an appointment with the doctor. Just getting in the door and talking about it. Uh, even if you haven't seen a doctor for 20 plus years, to just get in and get a checkup with your local physician. Um, and then monitoring things that are modifiable. So smoking, um, uh, what we eat, usually excess amount of calories, uh, excessive uses of alcohol. Um, these are things that we can modify as well as our activity level, um, which can help prevent some chronic conditions and even cancer in some instances. We've been talking about smoking year after year after year. Mm -hmm. And the thing that breaks my heart the most, and, and I'm not picking on them, but when I see young kids, you know, in their teenagers and early 20s, uh, no matter, and, and, and women, uh, you know, mm -hmm. smoking, the dangers of smoking, wh what does it do? Well, uh, the biggest one is um, lung cancer, puts you at risk for lung cancer. Um, and there's actually screening guidelines for if you smoked a certain amount for so many years and you're between the ages of mid-50s to uh, 70s that you qualify for lung cancer screening. Uh, so there's already written into the guidelines those type of things. As people know, smoking puts you at risk for lung cancer. Uh, cardiovascular disease and just disease of your vessels in general. Does, does um, people who've been smoking for many years, okay, when they get sick, uh, is their system not as great as it would be if they were not smoking? So they're combat what they... Sure. So uh, smoke in general kind of stuns the little hairs in your airway that help 
clear out uh, infection, inflammation, debris. And so if you stun that ability or that mechanism that kind of God gave us to clean out our lungs, then it's, things are going to be static in there and develop and ferment into kind of an infection, mm -hmm. which put you at risk for this chronic uh, bronchitis that usually is viral, but that can then develop into a pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And so overall, it just creates an inflammatory state in the lungs that puts you at risk for worsening symptoms and infections. All right, so what uh, is the, the typical, now there's, I know you see all ages, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, other than uh, babies or pediatrics, uh, pediatrics yeah. okay? What's the um, um, age of the, the general age of patients that you, you know, that you typically see? Sure, I see uh, from 16 to uh, above. Um, so if you're uh, 99, 100, 101, I'll see you as well. And hopefully I'll see you at 101. too. <clears throat> when you're talking about um, in, in the area, <clears throat> sometimes people, um, they try to lose weight. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have, you know, I know your brother has a fitness center, and which is, oh. does a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you try to stay active. But sometimes, you know, you get caught up in life. All right, and, and it's, you know, it's easy to say I'm going to do this, particularly if you're gaining weight or if you're, you know, just, what, what are some of the suggestions, you know, especially when it's, uh, summertime, you can get out there. Wintertime, oh, my God, you know, the world's coming sure. to an end. Okay, what, what do you suggest? Sure. Um, it's a challenge. You get caught behind the eight ball of cookies during the holidays, chocolates, and then, um, you know, work catches up on you in the new year. And it, it's tough. It's not easy. And everyone, it's... Easier said than done to preach diet and exercise. And it's more of an approach of lifestyle changes. And so when you hear the word diet, you think, oh, well, it's just for the next couple weeks because I have to go to the beach or something. It should really be about how do I change my eating habits to be just overall healthy, which in turn will help you lose weight. And so it's just eating less because we all typically eat more than we should. So most of the weight loss can come in the kitchen and making uh, more appropriate food choices. It's okay to have a piece of cake or cookie here and there, but not have three or four, uh, four or five times a week. Um, so eating less, um, good portion control, eating healthier foods, of course, and then just maintaining an active lifestyle. So you said in the summertime, it's easy to go out for a walk. Um, it's not five degrees out. Um, but maintaining activity level in the house. So not just being a couch potato and sitting on uh, Netflix and chill and just watching it. And watching two. the Sam Los Angeles. And what, well, you could do that too yeah, in between yeah. while walking on a treadmill That's in your right. living room. Yeah. But being active and kind of folding the laundry, walking upstairs, if you have kids playing with them. Boy, my wife says in many, many, she said, I don't have to, you know, she's, because when you're cleaning the house and I, and I, you know, I run the sweeper like once a week and just to get exercise, oh yeah. I, I mean, think that should be a show. Yeah, no, <laughs> I do. I mean, and, and because I mean, you know, busy at the house, but I mean, to me, I enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> because I'm, you know, I'm moving around and doing mm -hmm. things because I don't get a chance to go to your brother's place like oh, I would sure. love to, okay? Yeah. Uh, but the point is that, you, you know, you're doing, and also, I guess the word moderation is something mm -hmm. that we should look at, don't you think? Oh, certainly. You know, like if certainly. a person's doing four of this, knock it down to two. If they're, you know, when you say healthy foods, what do you mean by it? What, what I mean because you hear different things. You know, mm -hmm. eat lettuce, eat this. I don't know. I mean, so. So the <clears throat> the nutrition and diet industry is extremely large, and there's so much science involved in it, and it's still kind of murky. You have diets that range from low carb, ketogenic, to low fat, um, to uh, cycle dieting, and there's just a, a myriad of different diets out there. My simple advice is when you go to the grocery store, go on the perimeter only, because that's where the most healthy foods are, your lettuces, your vegetables, uh, your lean meats, your chickens, your dairy, everything else within the aisle is usually highly processed food that has usually a higher glycemic index that spikes your insulin up or that's very dense in uh, calories. So if you just stay in the perimeter, the outside perimeter of a grocery store, it kind of makes it easy to shop. Uh, and here again, it's, it's little things you could do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you don't have to drop, you know, uh, some, you know, if you drew a little bit at a time, I would think oh, it sure. <clears throat> works out. Now, you're, um, you're available on Saturdays. You're, you, 
your father and your brother. Am I correct? Correct. Folks, on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. down in Drums, uh, Dr. Philip Benio Sr.'s uh, office, from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., they have office hours, and the three of them are there, okay? Um, and so uh, if you'd like to make an appointment, uh, 501 4LBH. Is that correct, Ted? Okay, so you can call and, and, and make a, an appointment with doctor. So I'm talking to Dr. Daniel Benio, uh, and it's, uh, it's nice to have him in the area. Uh, he brings a lot of uh, good information. You know, um, uh, the, the whole thing on healthcare, how things change. <clears throat> the body is amazing. Because it has a healing process, I'm sounding like Phil Benio Sr. Because if you kickstart it in an area and you're able to get, that's why it's, I think it's so important to get to a doctor, your family doctor, so he could see, so he could kickstart something before things get really crazy. Okay. No, um, your advice, once again, for that person, you know, when what would be a typical? So I haven't seen a doctor in three years. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's nothing wrong with me, okay, sure. but maybe you have high blood pressure, you don't know about it, or you have mm -hmm. something, okay. What, is it, what, is, what, is it, what do they go through? Like, give me an answer. So a general physical exam um, and talking to the patient beforehand, just asking them what kind of risks are in their life. We evaluate that through uh, do they smoke, how much alcohol are they drinking, what do they do for their occupation, because there are some occupations that uh, offer some health risks and then doing a general physical exam and getting some blood work as well to evaluate what their kidney function is, liver function, uh, their blood counts, their cholesterol, their thyroid, um, and then age appropriate cancer screening. So uh, modifi modifiable things in life are doing cancer screening and catching cancer early so that it doesn't develop into something that's catastrophic. So that's through colonoscopies. For women, mammograms, pap smears, DEXA scans to look at bone health. And then for men, uh, this is a little controversial, but uh, prostate cancer screening as well can be discussed. What do, uh, okay, two things. Number one, um, w as a result, I can tell you, as a result of the health shows, the Lehigh Valley Hospital um, Network is sponsoring these shows. Uh, I'm going to tell you, we saved a, a lot of lives because oh, I know I, I know people come up and say, I was watching your show and I had went for a colonoscopy and bingo, thank God I went or it would have been got breast cancer. They mm -hmm. went. So these are things that, you know, you know, and listen, we're all human. We're, you know, like I said, I'm a baby. I, I'm nervous, you know, but however, oh, you know, you got to do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, colon, colonoscopies, okay, some people just, you know, fear them. I feared them for three years. I mm -hmm. do these shows. I went, it was a piece of cake. There was mm -hmm. nothing to it, okay? And I highly recommend it. When you think, what are the ages that you should get a colonoscopy? So general age is 50 to uh, 75. That's with just standard risk. And that top number, 75, um, can kind of change depending upon how healthy you are, um, your life expectancy. And then, not to get into too much detail, but sometimes we screen people earlier than the age of 50, depending upon their family history and their risk from that. Now, there's been, I'm talking to Dr. F uh, Daniel Benio, folks, and if you want to contact him, it's 501 4LBH. Uh, but on Saturdays, they're down at the, uh, Dr. Philip Sr.'s office in Drums uh, from 7 a.m. to 3 a.m. There's been some controversy about PSAs. What, mm. What's going on here? I mean, because sure. you should get them, you shouldn't, I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, this is a discussion that should be held with your physician and um, it's changed over the years. It, uh, from my understanding, mm -hmm. it used to be part of the routine screening mm -hmm. and in some, some insurance um, qualifications they request you have a PSA level. So um, sometimes it's a discussion of whether or not you're having symptoms. Um, so. This is kind of stepping a little bit out of my wheelhouse, but sometimes we, uh, when they looked at people uh, over a certain amount of period, say 50 years, and they looked and they did autopsies on them, they saw that these individuals, while they passed away from other complications of their chronic conditions, they actually were found to have prostate cancer. Um, and so some prostate cancers are more aggressive than others. And on a, a, a scale that's infinite, uh, every man will develop prostate cancer eventually, some sooner than others, some later than others. The question is whether or not that cancer will actually succumb and, and kill you. Here again, it's a, it's a checkup. Folks, mm. I'm talking to Dr. Daniel Benio, 
501 4LBH. We'll be back right after this message. Welcome back to the Sam Sand Show, folks. My guest today is Dr. Daniel Benio, okay, uh, the son of Dr. Philip Benio, Sr., uh, and it's so nice to have you in the area and, and practice it. How you been doing so far? You, you having any fun? Yeah, having a lot of fun. Good so far. Um, we're, we moved into Mountaintop, um, and so uh, we love the area. You have children? I, I have two children, two and four. And, and I hope they drive your father crazy. Oh, they uh, love my father. <laughs> I actually. know, he yeah. loves them too. And he has, <laughs> he has other children. Philip Jr. has children. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got a whole bucket. So you're, fa for you're family oriented, uh, Daniel, and uh, you know, you, you bring a lot, your internal medicine. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're with the Lehigh Valley Physicians Group. Uh, folks, and if you'd like to get in contact with Dr. Daniel Benio, just think of Daniel Boone, okay? I, that's how I remember his name. That's crazy. But Dr. Daniel Benio, it's 570-501-4LBH. And that's all you can do. Anything else in closing you'd like to talk about? And I know you, uh, you have a lot of experience and you have a lot of things and a lot of interesting things that you're going to bring to the table. Sure. Um, you know, when you uh, see one of my father, myself, my brother, we kind of uh, communicate amongst us uh, as well. And so... We go into the hospital, um, we go into nursing homes, and we do home visits as well. So yes. we're kind of uh, provide a comprehensive care. When your dad told me he was doing home visits, I said, that's fantastic. You know, mm -hmm. he loves it. You oh, know, yeah. You love I mean, you go home, it's, he loves it. Okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I wish you the best, and it's so nice to, to see you again, okay? Oh, you too. Thank uh, you. Dr. Daniel Benio, folks, uh, get in contact with him at 570-501-4LBH. And remember... Saturdays, the three of them are there at the drums office, Dr. Philip Benio Sr.'s office. You get called and get directions. It's uh, from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Dr. Philip Benio Sr., uh, Philip Benio Jr., and Dr. Daniel Benio is, is there. So uh, once again, good luck to you. We'll see you next time.